Ladies and gents, in this video we will be looking at how to make a top down shooter in Unity. As you can see here, it will play like a twin stick shooter, only we will be playing with keyboard and mouse. I've also split this tutorial into segments that you can find in the description below. But before we begin, make sure to like and subscribe for more videos just like this. Okay, let's get into it. So, the first thing you want to do is open Unity and then create a new project. Choose a name, select a folder and choose 3D. You can also turn off analytics if you like, but that's up to you. Then click create project. Once that is done, we want to create an arena for our game to take place. Right click in the hierarchy, create an empty game object and name it arena. Make sure its position is reset to 0 2. Next, right click on arena in the hierarchy and create a cube. Make sure cube appears under arena as shown, and if it doesn't, just drag it over arena and let it go. This ensures that it is a child object of the arena. Also reset the cube's transform, name it ground, and now you can change the cube's y position to minus 0.5, then scale it to 50 on both the x and z axis. Right click again on arena to create another cube, make sure this too is a child object. Rename it to wall, change its x position to minus 24.5 and its z should be at 0. Scale this wall to 50 on the z axis. As you can see here the wall is positioned inside the ground, so fix this by setting the y position to 0.5. Right click this wall in the hierarchy and duplicate it, set its x position to 24.5 which is the opposite side of the arena and then create two more walls positioned at the other sides of the arena. Do this by duplicating the walls and changing the position and scales. Something to note as shown here, to prevent clipping make the last two walls a scale of 48, like shown. Finally we can add some color to the arena. In the project view, right click in the assets folder and choose create folder. Name this materials and open it. Right click in the new materials folder and create a new material. Name the material matte ground. You can alter the color in the inspector like I do here, and you can do whatever color you like. Once complete, drag this new material onto the ground, then create another material called matte wall, and repeat the same process only dragging this new color onto our walls. Now we have our arena, and we want to save this as a prefab. So go back to the assets folder, and create a new folder named prefabs. In the hierarchy, click and drag the arena object into this new folder, and you will see it now displayed inside. So let's save our scene before creating the player. Create a new folder in the assets folder again and call this one scenes. Then click save, or sorry, click file, save scene as and name the scene and save it. Okay, and now we can create the player. Right click in the hierarchy and create a capsule. This will be our player, so set its Y position to one and rename it to player. Next, add a character controller to the object by clicking add component and typing into the search bar jar controller or it should just pop up before you even finish. Change the skin width to 0 and press enter. It will default to 0 0.0001 and this will prevent the object from looking like it is floating later on. Next create a material to the, for the player called matte player and drag it onto the player object. We also need an object to tell us what direction the player is facing. So to do this we can create a sphere in the hierarchy and attach it to the player as a child object. Rename it to face Remove the sphere collider component and position it on the object so that it looks like it's at the face coming out of the front of the player. This is helpful later so we know what direction the player will be facing. Let's just quickly adjust the directional light here too. So move it out of the way first and remember the position of a directional light doesn't matter it's only the rotation that is the key. With that said also change the rotation set x to 10 and y to minus 100 and then z to 2. And finally we can get to do some coding. We'll start by writing some code to move our player. Create a new folder called scripts in the asset folder. Open it and right click and then create a new C sharp script called player movement. Double click this to open it in the editor. I'm just going to start by removing these comments. It's a personal thing I do but you can keep them in if you like. Next, because we're going to move our player we want to access the character controller. So type in character controller m underscore char cont. We will start our private variables with an m underscore and then a lowercase letter. We also need two float variables to store both our horizontal and vertical movements. So type in float m underscore horizontal and float 
M underscore vertical. It's worth noting here too, if you don't declare a variable as private or public, it will default to private, which is the most secure option. This is why we also start these variables with an M underscore, even if it doesn't have private at the start. We also need to control the player speed. So we'll use a public float called player speed and this equals 0.3. In the start method, we need to declare our character controller. So type in M underscore character equals get component character controller. Next, we have to go to the update method and write code to move. So set M underscore horizontal equal to input dot get axis horizontal and M underscore vertical equal to input dot get axis vertical. We now need to place this into a vector three. So type vector three M underscore player movement equals new vector three M underscore horizontal zero F and M underscore vertical. And this is all multiplied by player speed. And for the part that actually moves the player type M underscore QR dot move M underscore player movement. Taking a quick look at the Unity documentation, we can see what this line does. And to read it directly, it attempts to move the controller by motion. The motion will only be constrained by collisions and it will slide along colliders. Essentially, it lets us move and stops the player from going through walls. If we go back to Unity and click play, we can now see the player move around the scene. Something to take note of is when we are moving the camera, stay still. We can fix this by creating another simple script. First of all, let's put the camera in its default position. Click the main camera in the hierarchy, adjust the Y position to about 8.83 and its Z position to minus 8. Then also change the X rotation to 45. When you click play, you can see the camera is at a much better angle with better view. Next, we need to create a new script. So name this camera follow. Click on the main camera again and drag the script over to the inspector and attach it. Then open the script for editing. First thing to type in is public transform player. We need the player's transform so we can follow the player. Then type float cam offset z, which is the offset in the z position. In the start method, type in cam offset z equals game object dot transform dot position dot z e minus player dot position dot z. This calculates the distance between the player and the camera. In our update method, type in vector3 m underscore cam pause equals new vector3 player dot position dot x game object dot transform dot position dot y and player dot position dot z plus cam offset dot or sorry cam offset z. Then we assign this new vector3 to the camera using Game object dot transform dot position equals m underscore camera pause. Save the script and head back to Unity. Make sure you drag the player game object into the camera follow script as shown. You can now see that the camera follows the player. That seems to be working fine, but now we need to allow the player's character to rotate and look around. We will make the player rotate towards the position of the arrow on screen. This means we will send the raycast from the pointer and have the player rotate towards where it collides. So create another script called player direction and drag it onto the player in the hierarchy. For this, we will only need the update method. So inside update type ray ray equals camera dot main dot screen point to ray input dot mouse position. Then raycast hit hit. And if you need or if you want to see the ray visibly in the scene view, Add in debug.drawRay, ray.origin, ray.direction times 1000, and color.white. This draws a white line to represent the ray, but it only appears in the scene view, not the actual game. Next, we need to check if physics.raycast, ray, comma, out, hit, then vector3, target position equals new vector3, hit, dot, point, dot, x, transform.position.y hit.point.z and quaternion rotation equals quaternion.look rotation target position minus transform.position and also type transform.rotation equals quaternion.lerp 
transform.rotation, rotation, and time.delta time multiplied by 10. Save this script now and go back to Unity to try it out. When you play the game, you can now rotate the player and still move around too. It's starting to feel a bit more like a top down shooter already. If you play with the scene view and game view side by side, you can see the white debug line that we coded in as well for the ray. With that now working, we're going to need some enemies. Before creating an enemy, I'm going to temporarily disable the player as shown. First thing to do when creating an enemy is create the enemy model. For us, this is easy. Just right click in the hierarchy and create a cube. Then rename it enemy. Change its Y position to one and its Y scale to two. Also add a character controller to this, similar, similar to what we did with the player. Finally, go to the materials folder and create a new material. Right click, create material. Name it matte enemy and choose a color. And once you've chosen the color, simply drag it onto our enemy. Next up, we need to make our enemy move and follow the player. So enable the player again by clicking it in the hierarchy and checking the box in the inspector view. Then select the enemy and drag it away from the player. Around a 10 on the X position should be fine here. Now we can write our script to move the enemy. So first create a new script and call it enemy movement. Attach this to the enemy game object and open it in the script editor. In this script, we want to replace our start method with the awake method. Then we can create some variables. So type in public int enemy speed, game object m underscore player, and we will use m underscore player to find our player game object so we can follow it. Then add m underscore player equals game object dot find player. We now have the player so we can next write code to follow it. Inside our update method type vector3 local position equals m underscore player dot transform dot position minus transform dot position and local position equals local position dot normalized. And finally we have transform dot translate local position dot x times time dot delta time times enemy speed and local position dot y multiplied by time dot delta time multiplied by enemy speed and the same for local position dot z. What this code does, it gets the local position and moves the player towards that. So save this script and go back to Unity. Before we test, this place a speed of 5 into the enemy speed position as shown. Then click play to see how it works. As expected, the enemy now follows the player around the arena. If you go back to the script and look at the transform.translate values, we are also updating the Y position. We don't actually need to update the Y position here. And we can only update the X and Z because that's the only, the only axis that we're moving in. So you can replace this with 0F if you like. And if you test it out again, it sh should still work just fine. Now we need to write a script that can make the enemies attack and kill the player. We will be doing a simple trigger detection and destroying the player game object. So create another C Sharp script and name this enemy attack. And like before, attach it to the enemy. Before we edit the script, add another box collider by clicking add component and typing into the search bar. You can tidy this up like I am by moving the colliders next to each other in the inspector. On the new collider, check the box for is trigger. This ensures we can check for triggers in our code. Click on the player and change the player tag to also be player. Now that we have gotten some things in place, we can write our script. Open the script and remove both start and update methods. Instead, add in on trigger enter, and then type into this if other dot tag equals player, then destroy other dot game object, and this will destroy our player. So save the script and go check it out. The player will now be destroyed when contact is made with the enemy. So far, we are able to move our player around the arena and also make some enemies attack the player. Next, we want to enable the player to kill enemies by shooting them. So let's start by getting rid of this enemy. Move its X position back to zero and drag the enemy into our prefabs folder. Then delete it from the hierarchy. We can now use this prefab to create multiple enemies if we like. We want to add a gun to the player before we make it shoot too. Right click on the player in the hierarchy and add a cube. Resize this cube so it is positioned as shown with the same transform values. 
Then create a new material called matte gun and apply it to the gun. We also need a point on the gun that bullets can come from. Right click on the player again and create an empty game object. Name it bullet spawn and position it at the front of the gun with the same transform values as shown here. Create a new script called player shooting and attach it to the player. Then open it for editing, delete the start method and change the update method to fixed update. Just below fixed update add a method called fire. Then add some variables at the top. Type in public game object bullet prefab, public transform bullet spawn, public float time between shots equals 0.3333f and private float m underscore timestamp equals 0f. Next we want to go to our fixed update method and add in if time dot delta time is greater than or equal to m underscore timestamp and input dot get key key code dot mouse zero. Then call our fire method and reset our timer with m underscore timestamp equals time dot time plus time between shots. Then we have to write the fire method. So type ver bullet equals game object instantiate bullet prefab bullet spawn dot position and bullet spawn dot rotation. We also want to add some velocity to the bullet when it is shot. So add here bullet dot get component rigid body dot velocity equals bullet dot transform dot forward times 50. We also want to destroy the bullet after two seconds if it doesn't hit anything. This ensures bullets don't last forever which could affect performance later. To do this type destroy bullet comma 2.0f. We need to add a piece of code that allows the bullet to kill the enemies. To do this go to the enemy attack script and add to the onTrigger enter method else if other.tag equals bullet then destroy game object. Save everything and go back to unity. We now need to create our bullet prefab. Right click in the hierarchy and create a sphere game object. Alter its transform values to match those shown here and add a rigid body to the object also. Then uncheck the box for use gravity. Click on the drop down beside tag and select add tag. Then click this plus icon and type in bullet as shown. Go back to the sphere object, rename it to bullet and change its tag to the newly created bullet tag. Drag our new bullet into the prefabs folder and delete it from the scene view. Then select the player and drag the bullet prefab into the provided bullet prefab slot and drag the bullet spawn into the bullet spawn spot. If you now test the game you'll be able to shoot. That's everything we need for this game now created. If you zoom out a bit and drag some enemies into the scene and position them around the player you have a little top down shooter that you can play. Obviously there's a lot more that can be done to make this an actual game but the point in this tutorial was to give you a good jumping off point and you could add in a UI or art and animations or even tighten up the core mechanics a little bit more or add in your own unique twist, it's up to you. But with that we've come to an end of another tutorial video. I really hope you've enjoyed this video and maybe you've learned a thing or two from watching. But make sure to subscribe to this channel for more tutorials just like this. Bye! You just type a command into chat and the game responds. Simple. Then, in later videos as part of a larger project I'm working on, I'll show you how to make better use of this chat information. I think it's also best to have a disclaimer here. The method used in this video is only good for educating you on how this can work, as you'll see